Hello all. I wasn't really paying attention to my YouTube account, and the video on the spherical parallel manipulator got a bunch of views, a bunch of attention, and a lot of people asking if they could get the CAD for this. And I'm not going to release the CAD for this one because it's a hot mess, and also it requires a bunch of really weird parts that I just happen to have. I'll go into the details in a sec, but I am interested. I'm making a version two, and I'd be interested in everyone's feedback on sort of which direction to go because I have two concepts in mind. Um, both will achieve pretty much the same thing, but we'll do it in different ways. So concept one is a better version of the spherical parallel manipulator. Uh, it looks cool, but it has some drawbacks. The better version would be designed to be more reproducible by everyone else. So the current one requires a lathe and uses, you know, these very large bearings here because that's what I had on hand and the core of it is a piece of 30 mil uh, bearing shaft that I turned down, etc., etc., etc. It's all just stuff I had on hand and it's not really easy for everyone else to reproduce. So same sort of thing, uh, made more cheaply with the same sort of function and with some of the limitations sort of dealt with a little bit. So spherical par parallel manipulators have a limitation in that the roll center is fixed. So if you have a longer object to look at, uh, you can't get it to roll around that. Now, you can push it further down in the work holding and the bottom of the work holding you know, is hollow, etc. But you are still limited by essentially that height. And the more you make that, and also you need your object to stick out from this a little bit to be able to clamp it, particularly if it's, you know, a tapered object. But the bigger you make this, the crazier everything gets. Relationship-wise, you get giant arms, etc. So that's a limitation of spherical parallel manipulators like this. The other issue is you can only really look at concentric objects. So if something narrows down to a... Um, uh, something like a little end mill narrows down concentrically to the point of interest, that's easy enough. But if, you know, it, it's not round, you can still hold it in a collet if it'll fit. But if it's asymmetric, then you can't really choose where the roll center is. You could uh, make some adjustment in here, but it is a limitation essentially with this sort of style. Um, the, what other limitations have I written down? Um, Setting the subject to the right height can be tricky. I had three little 3D printed little jig that sort of you pulled the bit out to and tightened down, but when you're going to more magnification, that can be not enough. Um, and there's no real fine adjust for everything. And there's also a very high part count. There's 15 bearings in this. Uh, that said, it looks cool. Um, now, if you did want to make one yourself, um, say the community decides we go in a different direction, that's fine. If you don't want to make one yourself, the secret source in CAD is just that all the bearings point to the same spot. You just draw a point in space and make all of your bearing mounts aim there and then just draw crazy arms between them. Um, that brings me to some of the limitations with this particular design. Uh, you may have spotted the ugliness. Well, that's because it was a quick and dirty test and I couldn't be bothered doing a design study in CAD to figure out if these would interfere. Turns out they interfered, so I just, with everything together, heat gunned it and warped them all until it didn't interfere anymore. But it's part of the reason why it's not really releasable, it <laughs> won't work out of the box. Concept 2 is more functional, but dull. So if you want to just get macroscopy done, it, it's sort of uh, more adaptable, more easy to use, will work better, etc, 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 but it lacks the crazy weirdness of, of this. And it essentially is a, a, a polar manipulator, so um, this is not representative of the final thing, this is literally something I picked up in three minutes with junk I had on hand, but it's just to give you an idea. Um, so the whole point, for microscopy at least, is we want to be able to roll an object around a virtual center and this particular style, which is a macro slider screwed to a block of steel, a random drill chuck, etc., achieves that. So this thing moves up and down, and you put longer and taller objects in, etc., etc., you can set where it rolls around. It'll always roll around the axis of this point, 
but you can move the object up and down relative to that and still rotate it. The benefit of this is it can be made more practically. Uh, I estimate, I haven't finished the design yet, but uh, I could make a very cheap variant that is all 3D printed parts except for two rods, a few bolts and two bearings. And I could also make a more expensive but more precise variant that uses off the shelf things like this macro slider, which are $50 on AliExpress to make it more uh, rugged uh, for proper microscopy. Uh, other benefits is the little work table can be anything. You can put whatever you want here and you can even have a little tiny XY positioner to adjust for eccentric objects and, and so forth. It's much more uh, malleable. Lots you can do with it. Um, and you can swap out the work tables on something like that. Uh, what else have I got in my notes? It's boring, but it works. This is fun, but it's awkward. The other issue with this, of course, is if you want to maintain a thing and rotate it, it's very hard. You, you have lots of uh, parasitic motion whenever you do anything. It looks cool, but it's very hard to go, I just want to rotate around a bit. So, polar robot, uh, polar manipulator for practical mi microscopy, or spherical parallel manipulator for fun, cool, weird. Uh, let me know what you guys are interested in and I'll make a design that's reproducible for both. I have good AliExpress cheap sources for like bleh, bulk bearings and stuff. Like now it's $9, etc. So I can make it so it goes together cheaply from a bunch of parts and just provide a parts list and a 3D print list. But let me know what your use case is as well because I've been thinking, you know, low mag magnification microscopy on the bench checking end mills and so forth. But if you've got a different use case in mind, I'll sort of maybe adapt for that. Um, yeah, so let me know what you guys want. Uh, and for those curious about the paint my nails, uh, it's a nail polish. Uh, my hands are bare today, but um, one day the, the planets will align and I'll have finished a project without chipping all my nail polish off. But yeah, not that day. Cheers, guys.